Today I'm gonna show off an amazing three watch collection using only one brand. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Today is all about Orient. Yes, I wanted to find the perfect three watch collection using only the brand Orient. This company has been going since 1950 and they are one of Japan's largest watchmakers in Japan. Also, they're owned by Seiko, apparently. Very loosely owned, but that is true. Now it appears that in 2023, the brand Orient have become the Seiko of old. Yes, fantastic entry-level watches where value for money is at the forefront. They only do in-house movements, which is fantastic. And they're a brand that don't clone other watches. They may pick a few inspirations. <laughs> but they'll mash all those ideas up together to make their own designs, their own characters. And the three watches today are perfect examples of that. Now this show is sponsored by Joma Shop. They've sent these watches in for me and I don't have to give them back. I had the choice of any Orient on their website and after this show is finished, I want you to have a go at trying to find the best three watch Orient collection only using the Joma Shop website. All the links to today's watches are in the description below as well as a few fancy codes you can use when you check out on the Joma Shop website exclusively to the Mad Watch Collector viewers. <laughs> now all three watches I picked from the website came to a total of $758. That works out at about £610. Minus the import tax. Don't forget to wait till the end to listen to my wife's thoughts on all three watches. <laughs> oh God. It's time to see these beauties. Are you Orient ready? Let's go. Okay, so the first watch in my three watch collection has to be a diver and it's one that I've owned for about two to three weeks now and I'm loving it. And I am talking about the Orient, obviously Orient, Kamasu. Now this watch is a big fan's favorite for good reason. Because for just over $204, you could get a proper dive watch with a hell of a lot of features. We've got a screw down crown, screw down case back, a sapphire glass protecting the dial, a 120 click unidirectional bezel with a beautiful action. I chose this Fume type smoky sunburst dial. I really think it works with the faux patina of the handset and the indices. This is a 200 meter diver. Just that alone without talking about the movement is pretty bang for buck, isn't it? Inside the watch, we've got an F6922 automatic 22 joule movement firing away at 21,600 beats per hour. It has hacking, it's hand winding. You've got a day and a date complication. I don't really know why I bother getting another two watches, but still. This watch can do most jobs. There's polishing, brushing. The bracelet, I have to say, was a little bit too chunky for me. So I decided to be a bit sneaky and use a Clockwork Republic strap. Yes, this one is designed for the Seiko SKX. It has solid end links. Those end links just about almost fit perfectly on this Kamasu. Anyway, the rubber on this strap is beautifully premium and it's perfect for me as it takes down the weight just a little bit and as outside gets a little bit hotter this strap is very breathable also i think the color's pretty cool <laughs> but the first watch of the three the kamasu what a start <laughs> So the next watch, I kind of wanted an everyday watch. One that again could do most jobs in my life, but do it with a personality and a bit of swagger. And they don't come more equipped with toolie swaggerness than the Orient Defender. Now this beauty is the Mark II. I first saw the Mark 1 on Jewelry's The Time Teller Show, but this is a very interesting sports watch with a lot looking like it's going on, but in actual fact, it's quite simple. It's a stainless steel affair. We don't have a screw down crown, but we do have a screw down case back that gives this watch water resistance to 100 meters. I do love the bezel. It reminds me of a Vacheron Constantin, but this watch is all about that dial. Look at the textured waffly pattern. Looks different in all all sorts of lights. Usually I'm not one for asymmetrical dials, but there's something about this that works, you know? Both sub dials have different designs. We have a day and date complication on this 
this watch, but they are not together in one window. The top left subdial changes that day, which I think is pretty cool. The bottom right subdial is again a little bit pointless, but it's a 24 hour dial. Just gives it that fieldy vibe. The hands are quite avionic and are very clear. They kind of have to be, to be honest, don't they? The dial is protected by a mineral glass. And inside we have the caliber F6B22, which is an automatic movement, 22 joules, 21,600 beats per hour, and has a 40 hour power reserve. Very nice to operate, but it's when it went on my six and a half inch wrist, did I find that this one watch actually fits okay. There is a 42 millimeter diameter, but it only has a 48 millimeter lug to lug. With the 22 millimeter lug width, this stainless steel bracelet is a little bit clunky and chunky. They definitely don't put a lot of money into the bracelets, that's for sure. In a few days time, I will definitely change over this bracelet and stick it either on a, ooh, a deep dark green NATO or put it on a black rubber strap. Again, just like the Kamasu, there's enough polishing and brushing on this watch that you could take this to work, to a wedding, christening, bar mitzvah, Tuesday night, and it will fit right at home. I'm so glad I got to review a Defender up close and it 100% gets my recommendation. Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Right, last but not least, certainly, is a watch I have had a lot of intrigue for, and I am talking about the Orient Star range. So different that Orient needed to change the logo. This range is more, much more premium, but the last watch I chose was the Orient Star Classic Automatic. And this watch looks like it has been ripped straight from the 1960s. And into the shopping cart. It's definitely reminiscent to a King Seiko. And if you watch any films in the 50s and 60s, this is the watch they look like they're wearing. But I have to admit, I have never felt a more premium Orient than this one. From the transitions of the brushing and the polishing to the fantastic workmanship on that dial. The bracelet is a huge cut above the rest. Still pins like the other two, but the feel and the finishing to this watch is definitely a cut above those two. Look how elegant and tiny and slim those lugs are. Honestly, if you're into your vintage 50s watches, this is a beautiful one for you. Oh, here's another premium thing you don't find on Orient watches. A milled clasp. Yes. This watch is only water resistant to 50 meters. It is a dress watch, isn't it? It's not one I'm gonna go swimming in, that's for sure. There's no screw down crown. There's a screw down case back and it is an exhibition case back. And not only do we have a beautiful signed skeletonized rotor, look at all that perlage work in that movement. This is certainly not a watch you can film very easily because of that domed bubble mineral crystal, but that coupled with the domed dial, I think it looks Spot on. Now inside this watch is the Caliber 40N52. It's an automatic, 22 joules, hacking in hand winding, and this movement has a power reserve indicator. And if I wind the watch, you can see that indicator going up. Now it being a dress watch, I don't mind there being a date window. However, I wouldn't have minded that window being black, just to sort of subtly disguise it, you know? But this is a quintessential vintage inspired watch that you'd be very proud of owning. The only other criticism I'd give this watch is it being premium and costing over $368. I would have liked a higher beat movement, but I can't have everything, can I? This has been a great eye-opener for me, as it has cemented what a lot of people have said, that Orient are the new Seiko, especially in the entry-level range. But with these three watches as a collection, I don't think there's anything more you need, apart from maybe a Casio. You know, just to give it some company. <laughs> Throw in an F91W in with it too, huh? But all three watches have in-house movements, original design. All three of them look completely different from the other. With Orient, you've got to take into account Count that the bracelets may not be that good. Hollow end links, hollow links. But you and me have got enough straps to play around with them, haven't we? When it comes to the Orient Star, that bracelet was very nice, very comfortable as well. I think there's something to be said from someone owning a few watches from the same brand. Someone a bit loopy. <laughs> Orient are a great brand. You've just got to get past the fact that the logo looks like a cigarette packet. <laughs> and the Orient Star is no better, let's be honest. The S looks like some sort of cheap sports brand, you know, like Sondico. Definitely not quite nailed the logos, that's for sure. But this free watch collection is sweet.
Here it is, my wife's first impressions of all three beautiful Orients. <laughs> first, the Kamasu. This watch is meh. I've said this before, it reminds me of guitars, but I don't like it. Next up, the Defender. <laughs> this is all sorts of busy and not in a good way. It reminds me of cigarettes, the dial and the logo. Now the Orient Star. This is very blingy. I don't like it. Hate the bracelet. It does look like a smiley face on the dial though, but it's still not good. What a way to lift your husband and everyone else watching. She tells it like it is, doesn't she? Thank you so much to Joma Shop for sending these watches in to me. I've done my Orient 3 watch collection. Now it's your turn. And remember, you can only use the Joma Shop website. The next three watch collection will be done with Seiko's. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Go on, click this one. It'll get you in the mood. It's a fantastic show. Go on, click it. Click, click it.